I'd have to get my things from the cabin I've been using. Good. Then we'll expect you for dinner. All right. Your mother does love you. I'm sure of that. But sometimes people do things because they think they have to, even though it's wrong. But she was right about one thing. She knew I'd take care of you. And now that you're here, you won't have a care in the world. When I was a lad, growing up here in the cove, I was just like you. But when I went to live and study in Scotland, it changed my life forever. I received a very good education, and I became a physician. But it was more than that. Does anyone know why? You come back talking like that? <laughs> Not exactly. Living in Scotland, stirred up the Highlander traditions in my blood. The same blood that flows in each and every one of you. Now, it doesn't matter whether you live in Scotland or Cutter Gap or the North Pole. Our heritage makes us what we are today. Now, Reverend Grantland has talked at length about baseball. And I'm here today wearing my grandfather's kilt because I'm going to teach you some games with real tradition and purpose. Highland games. Games of strength and determination. Games born in glorious times past when men knew the true meaning of sport. To see who was equal to the challenge. To win the victor's trophy. And the young lady's heart. Can't no gals be playing them Highland games? Of course they can, Lulu. Traditions were meant to be shaped by those who honor them. And so I say, let the games begin. Quack, quack, quack. Why 
Why isn't that little girl swimming with us? Quack, quack. Quack, quack. Good morning, Miss Huddleston. Oh, <laughs> good morning, Miss Alice. Isn't it strange? I have always had trouble getting out of bed in the mornings, but ever since the baby arrived, I can hardly wait for the day to begin. Isn't she just the most precious thing you've ever seen? Babies are a blessing. She's just perfect. Her little hands, her little feet, her smile. I swear she understands me when I talk to her. She understands love. I wish I could give her a name. Emma. She looks like an Emma to me. Emma Barnett. Naming her will be the privilege of her new family, Christy. But are we her family now? We're caring for her. She seems very happy with us. You mean Thee is happy with her? Of course I am. I think we should keep her here and raise her at the mission, Miss Alice. I do not think that would be wise. But we have so much to offer her. A safe, loving environment, spiritual instruction. She would be the true fulfillment of our mission. And besides, it would just be so much fun to have a baby around for all of us. Though I would do all the work, I would feed her and change her. I would take full responsibility. You're not taking in a stray cat. You're speaking about a human being. Are you prepared for motherhood? Were you? I was not, nor did I have a choice in the matter. There is a great deal more to being a parent than meets the eye. Now we will seek a good family for her. But if none can be found here, we will certainly find one through the Christian Orphanage at Knoxville. You all done? Are you sure? You didn't eat very much. <gasps> Don't be shy, David. Come join us. Isn't she wonderful? Look who she has to learn from. You know what I think? I think we have the makings of a real family. Miss Alice, we have to talk. I don't want you to call the orphanage. There may not be an alternative. There will be if someone adopts her. And I think I know a young couple who might be interested. David and me. What do you mean? I am reconsidering his proposal. Sarah Barnett's baby set you thinking about marriage? I have been thinking about it ever since he asked me. It has been on my mind constantly. And now, with the baby in my life, I am seeing everything more clearly than before. Is that a fact? I believe she may be a sign from God. I've always had difficulty reading the Lord's mind. I hope you have better luck. <laughs> Over the next few days, my argument with Miss Alice troubled me. And so did the baby. She was fitful. She wouldn't eat. And then, suddenly, her breathing sounded wrong, as if she was gasping for air. Where's Miss Alice? Oh, she ain't back from Sand Creek yet. Ask Mr. Grantland to go get Dr. McNeil and see if you can find Aunt Scott. Yes, ma'am. Shh. It's all right. Stop crying. 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 St
Thank you, but I don't think the baby is interested in food right now. Child's burning up. I know I have sent for the doctor. She ain't breathing right. Her lungs is filling. Looks like the crew. Oh, well, what are you doing? Well, we got to gather up some onions and fry them real hot for poultice. I appreciate your concern, but Dr. McNeil will be here any second. Well, he ain't home. He passed our place heading over to El Paino. Then today. Dan Scott will know what to do. Please, let go of me. I know what to do, Miss Wilson. I'm sorry, Opal, but I will not allow you to touch this child. I don't care what you think of me, that I'm not fit to be nursing no child. But I got to help this one, and you can't stop me. Opal, please, no, no, listen to me. If we don't make that poultice right now, this baby might die. 